Hello there. Some people were asking me how I do my creeks, specifically the creeks that have a slant to them. Uh, the regular water in trains is flat, so I decided to put together a tutorial. I've got a little short branch near Sherman Butte that goes up to a mine. So let's start up in the top of the hill and trace the creek route out. You can see that the hills are all filled in and uh, pretty much ready but there's no water in the creek bed, so let's take care of that. So the first thing I do is I grab a piece of track and I lay the track up the creek bed. And you might think that's kind of nuts, but there's method to the madness because if you're using creek bed splines, there's no way to set the, the gradient of a spline automatically, but you can set the gradient of track. So I lay the track up and you'll notice that I've got the uh, the gradient set to half a percent here. It started off at 1%. Then I hit S, and now we're gonna smooth the track sub roadbed. And this is actually making the basic, basics of a creek bed that runs at a constant gradient. So once I've got that done, let's, uh, we're gonna pick a spline. It's one of my favorites and we'll set the spline up because the spline will line to the uh, bottom of the creek bed. Basically it's laying on top of the railroad tracks sub road bed. You notice that the spline ends are not on top of the track you know, ends. Uh, otherwise it can get a little tricky figuring out which one is which. So I offset them by a little bit here. Now one of the things about splines is they always tend to conform their endpoint elevations to whatever the ground is underneath them. So if you move the ground up and down, then the spline moves up and down too. So I've set, I've entered set elevation mode by hitting, uh, going into advanced and hitting H, and then I click on each of the vertices, and that locks it into position. Note that I don't raise or lower the vertices. So now I've got the uh, topology to, you know, area, and I'm in the plateau tool. And I'm using that to drag a lower elevation up the creek because the creek is going up. So I, I work from you know the outlet to the top of the creek, and I can use the plateau to basically drag a uh, lower elevation up there. And if you notice, the you know, the uh, terrain is definitely moving, but the splines are not moving. Neither is the track, for that matter. So, uh, got a little problem there. The road was too low, and so we're gonna fill in some dirt. And, uh, you know, I wanted it to, I just felt it wasn't very realistic, so I had the road come up over a little bit of a hill there. So now let's get rid of the track. We don't need that anymore. That, I was just using that as a template for the creek bed. So once the creek's in place, uh, it's time to do a little tweaking on the uh, adjoining terrain. Want to try to you know do micro adjustments on it, and arrange it so it's more pleasing. Get rid of uh, abrupt edges, sort of thing. And uh, I do like to save my work a lot. It uh, definitely saves problems if you delete too much stuff. If you've got a backup version to go back to. One of the tricks I sometimes use is I use the block copy to copy a blank area in replace mode. Notice it's replace mode, not actually copy mode, on top of stuff, and it lets me erase everything within that, that block square. It's much faster than trying to click on individual things. So I'm going to paint the uh, creek bed or the creek bed bottom uh, blue color. I like this uh, you know, water with gravel color. That uh, works nice. Note that that's not a PBR texture. That's a uh, non-PBR texture. And I'm going to pick another non-PBR texture to try to uh, paint the creek bed, the, the 
banks of the creek. And the reason for that is that uh, splines don't play nice with PBR textures. If I used a PBR texture, then you wind up with strange artifacts of where the uh, terrain hits the water spline. And uh, yeah, that needed to come up a little bit. Let's get rid of that line that's uh, running. You can see a line running through the terrain where there's a where there's a row of grid squares. I like to ask myself, how would uh, the weather, water, wind, and time erode the banks of this creek? Obviously, the creek itself is the biggest eroder, but uh, there'll be water running down the hills toward the creek, and how would that be acting on the adjoining terrain? Now, the track here has got a number of uh, places where it crosses over in gullies, so I want to take those down too, but uh, you've got to be careful if you make uh, places where there's an abrupt change in elevation, you get a sharp edge. And then when you try to render the sharp edge, you can have uh, textures that sort of swim when you move by them. They look good enough just sitting there, but yeah, once you're in motion, then uh, you see a sort of a, a swimming of the textures. So, uh, Let's add some rocks. Because the terrain is sort of reddish here, I'm going to use boulder sandstone texture, which is uh, these guys. There's also sort of granite boulders, which uh, are very nice. So I'm going to make a uh, sort of a block of these boulders, and I'm going to block copy it uh, all over the place. It's much faster than placing individual boulders. And we'll make another block with some bigger boulders for up at the headwaters of the creek and other places where it seems like they might be advisable. So the boulders have a problem. Sometimes they're too high, sometimes they're too low, and you don't want all of them to be, to be twisted and tweaked the same way as the rest of them. So I'm going to I'm going to go through and tackle the boulders one at a time and set their elevation, spin them around and maybe slant them a little bit too. This is kind of tedious, so uh, the video is playing at 8x normal speed here, so you don't have to sit there forever waiting for me to do that. One of the things you'll see is if you've got small boulders, they may not be tall enough to poke through the surface of the water. So I just bring them, I can either raise the boulders up or I can bring up the level of the creek bed underneath. Also, the block copy doesn't always give you perfect alignment Align in an aesthetic sense. It doesn't look quite right, so I'm moving stuff around too and, and rearranging to try to make it look a bit better. And up at the very top of the creek, I'm slanting the water up a little more than it was to try to represent the uh, creek tumbling down the hillside. And uh, since there's water here, it figures that there's going to be more vegetation. So I nip over to another place where I've already got stuff and pick some uh, trees that I want to plant here. I'm trying to pick trees that would, uh, you know, 
be more be more typical of what you'd find in an area where, aside from the creek, that the uh, the water supply in the area is none too plentiful. I do tend to use a lot of speed trees, but uh, uh, you can use whatever trees you like. So we've got the highway flying through air above a gully here, and that's not appropriate to do that without having a bridge. So we'll uh, set up a highway bridge there connected to the highway. And then I've got this Howe Trussell, it's a railroad bridge. And well, normally uh, you wouldn't see that holding up a highway in real life. If we bring the railroad track right up underneath the, uh, the bridge level here, you won't be able to see the track. You adjust it right. But when you look underneath, there's this nice Howe Truss, you know, beautiful wooden Howe Truss that's holding up the bridge. And that seems like an appropriate way that such a bridge would be held up in this era in this uh, location. If you try to smooth the road up to the end of our bridge, there's almost a little gap there. So I move the road forward toward the bridge until it's actually over whatever the bridge is spanning and then set the uh, smooth command there. Then I move the road back and then I can come in and carve out from underneath and it makes it a little nicer. So this is low vegetation I'm putting in now. I grabbed a handful of it from another area on the layout that already had a plentitude of it. And uh, let's go put some extra rocks and stuff like that in it. Of course, when you do that, you want to make sure you hold the bracket key down so that the textures get um, rotated each time you uh, use one. Otherwise, you're going to wind up with some noticeable patterns developing the textures, or at least Many textures have that problem. And some JVC uh, grass spines there have a nice effect. I'm trying to use the uh, shortest and yellowest one. Wouldn't expect to find really lush grass growing out here, given that it's a, a moisture deprived area, except for right down next to the creek. And the tops of those cliffs are a little bit too abrupt. They're not going to render very well, so let's smooth them out a bit. And, uh, okay, you think there'd be sagebrush out in an area like this? So let's, uh, let's infest the area with sagebrush. And we've got this track up there that where the mine is. I'm calling that the Itzel mine, the uh, or the Itza mine. Another one of my stupid jokes. And let's uh, you know go in, and we're going to adjust the height of the track to uh, the terrain to uh, 
get rid of having this extra ballast shoulder show up in an area where there shouldn't be any ballast shoulder. And I'll stick a couple of uh, end of track stops there. And I find that I can most conveniently control the ballast coverage by setting the track elevation. And there ought to be a place for the people who work at the, uh, this part of the mine to park their vehicles. Uh, gee, I suppose the people working there would have a lot of pickup trucks, but some other stuff too. Given that this is supposed to be a 50s layout, let's pick some 50s vehicles. And uh, that's about it. Let's take a little trip up the creek here and see what it looks like. I think there's a few places where it could use some more tweaking. Ground contours aren't perfect and there's uh, places where there's some vegetation down in the water where it probably shouldn't be. I said about vegetation in the water, huh? I'll be needing to go back and uh, do that at a later time. Oh, that triangle there in the, in the abutment for the bridge, that's got to go. That's not going to render right. And no more water here, but, you know, if it's raining, it would collect water and get down there. Must be some springs underneath to feed it. I guess that's about it. If you got questions, you can post them in the YouTube uh, comments area, and I'll uh, do my best to answer them for you. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you enjoyed it, if you liked it, uh, be sure to click the thumbs up button, and see you in the next video.